Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 340. I'm going to say it's 340 or 341, not too sure. Actually, let me double check my notes just to make sure I don't want to mess up the numbers. It should be 340, right? Episode number 340 with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. What's going on? How you doing? How you feeling? Great. Amazing. How am I? Yeah, you know, could be better, could be worse, but you know, we just keep uh, powering through. I think the rest of humanity has essentially done that. Let me just move the camera a little bit closer to my face here so you can see me in HD. But yeah, um, I'm getting there, innit? I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I'm training a bunch still, still trying to keep my diet in check, just trying to work out a lot, still trying to, you know, read a bunch, watch a few movies, listen to some albums, you know, generally trying to fill my day with them. Um, great activities to make the mind not go into some sort of vegetative state vegetative state we don't not want that do we but yeah apart from that all is well on my side if you are watching this for the first time on your youtube make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or thoughts and feelings regarding the show and if you're watching via the podcast app of course leave me a five star review and share that bad boy with all your family and friends all right family and friends anyone get up to anything fun during the weekend probably not i'm assuming um apart from the old park excursion which you know i maintain i think especially in the uk i'm not sure how it is in other parts of the world but i think in the uk we don't really have a lot of um well prior to covid we didn't really have a lot of them there wasn't an outdoor lifestyle so i think covid has sort of allowed us to you know fall back in love with what it means to just be outside hanging out do you remember when you were younger and you had because i think it happens as soon as you get a bit of disposable income you just you tend to go to places that you want to go to because you just you know you can right when you're younger you don't really have any option there's not really many places for you to go shopping malls parks um your friends driveways gardens right sometimes their bedroom if their parents allow you to come in that's it you don't really have any other places so you you're generally always outside i remember being a kid if you you know back in the day you'd mistaken us for maybe a group of crackers you know how crackers are always just wandering in groups around the place right going to go pick up smack or whatever they may be doing in other places that's what kids usually do especially in my area you just like roaming the streets looking for some sort of uh motive as the kids say right something to get involved in something to just occupy your day um but i think once you get into adulthood and you start to earn a bit of a wage you start to have a bit of disposable income you tend to go to places that you want to go to right a bar a pub cinema whatever it may be some shopping hanging out you know maybe go on holiday um so you start to lose the appreciation of just hanging out but what you end up have what ends up happening is that especially if you go to the mediterranean or so even sometimes parts of Southeast Asia, there's a lot of people watching. It's just one of the pastimes people do, right? They go out on the weekend, they go to the town center, they rock up on the chair somewhere, get get themselves a favorite beverage, maybe some nice little delicatessen from a shop nearby. And they just sit down and watch people for the weekend. That's what they do. And then usually if you hang around the town squares, you might um, end up bumping into a couple of friends, people you haven't seen in, in, you know, in a long time. And then suddenly you've got another group of friends and then you're bouncing around and suddenly you got, it rolls on to actually let's go to some other bar. But usually your day is mostly centered around hanging out with your friends in this sort of like town square, right? Or in this kind of like city center on the strip. But in the UK, we don't do that that much anyway, especially at my age, or especially people above the age of 22, I'd imagine. Most of those people, you know, you're spending most of your time in shopping centers. Well, most of those people, are you, they're spending their time in, like, you know, trendy bars and co yeah, cocktail bars, I'd imagine, shisha places, nice restaurants, hotel lobby restaurant, hotel lobbies, and that's become a thing too in London. So I think we got a bit detached from it. We became a little bit, you know, a little bit stiff in our extracurricular activities but i think covid's been a net benefit net benefit in that respects i think if you've got a good enough um group of friends that don't mind going out to parks and hanging out because again it's, it's another it's a bit of a skill too to have the ability to know how to have fun outside it's not necessarily the same you know kind of plug and play that you do when you go to a bar but if you've got a group of friends that don't mind doing it it's a really fun time i've had some of my best occasions i can remember from going on holiday or just hanging out with my friends here have been when you've just been spontaneously hanging out and then you bump into somebody and suddenly your day, afternoon, night turns into a whole different fun adventure just because you end up going outside just hanging out with no real plan. And I've always loved that. I hate the whole like, you know, rigid, let's have an exact, you know, itemized list 
you know by the hour of what we're exactly we're gonna do i prefer to kind of freestyle a little bit with some structure here and there you know with some guide with some guardrails but let's you know let's be a bit loose and to be honest we don't really have an option in it right about now there's no rule any moment now something could change and you can uh, look at what happened to california you know suddenly they were starting to reopen a little bit and then now they've kind of announced they're going to shut everything down which you know big up to joey diaz he was right i watched the joe rogan podcast um fight companion the other day and he basically mentioned it in passing and you know he didn't really get any response joe was a bit negative on that front because you know those guys want to get back to doing stand-up but he basically said hey they're gonna shut everything down on monday and they did so you know there's no guarantee that once everything's open it's going to stay open so you have to kind of just make do with what's kind of available the bare minimum and sort of make fun make the most of that which i think is perfectly fine you know you can go to an off license you can go to a supermarket and get a couple of drinks there's a parks you can go to you can most probably buy a bluetooth speaker from you know an amazon i'm pretty sure they're still in good stock i'd imagine right um, they don't sell for that much even if you get like a shitty brand from like anchor or something you can probably sort yourself out get a group of friends or just go on your own plug in your headphones and just chill why not it's better than nothing in it um but on that front actually news has kind of just developed just today actually or a couple of uh hours ago the uk have now finally after a long and weird weekend actually um, there was loads of mixed messages with some of the people in government about whether, whether people should be wearing face masks inside shops, whether it should be mandatory, whether it should be yeah, whether it should be enforced or anything, or whether it should be something that it should be left up to the great, great British public's common sense, as Michael Gove um, said on Sunday. But now finally we have the report here. Um, this is from the BBC. It says coronavirus face coverings will in England shops to be compulsory from the twenty fourth of July, which is great. Um, that means going forward if you want to go into any sort of shop any sort of enclosed area you're going to have to have a face mask which i don't really think is that big of a deal um of course there is a small population of people out there who are vehemently against wearing it under all costs which i understand i think you should be allowed to wear it or not if you don't want to fair enough but it's just their insistence on kind of forcing everybody else not to wear it or getting angry when, other, when businesses don't allow them in it's just a bit disturbing right um, it kind of makes you wonder what those same people, what their opinions were. Do you remember back in the day, the few years ago, where there was a whole controversy about that bakery in the United States that wouldn't make a wedding cake for a gay couple? And a lot of conservative folks were like, oh, it's their right, right? It's their their business. They can do as they please. And then I think the state stepped in and essentially took away. I don't know if the state, I'm not sure what happened, but it was a big conversation online and behind of, do you agree with the with the bakery being able to sort of like mandate who they can serve to or do you think it doesn't matter what the sexual orientation is of a couple that's like getting a cake if they pay you make the bloody cake i wonder what these same people think about the face coverings because if a business rejects you from going in a store because they have effectively you know don't get me wrong morrison's as does tesco's they're not looking after the safety of us customers right if anything, they don't want us to die so that their shops don't have to close, they don't make money. They're looking after their own bottom dollar, and we know that. But if they if they, uh, if they they don't permit you to go in without a face mask, are they really impeding on your rights or are they making sure they look after their customers who are, you know, by by virtue of wearing a mask, who are kind of, your black, who are kind of agreeing, they're sort of signing a, a non-verbal contract that they're willing to sort of come into your shop with the mask and you're sure honoring it on your side as a shop owner by saying okay cool i'm gonna make sure everyone else follows the rules as well because i'm sure what's gonna happen is that most likely than not these shops won't necessarily be turning anyone away i think not i think most of them will be making sure which is why they probably announced it on the 24th of july they need to give the shops a heads up so that they can order in stocks of like you know cheap surgical masks you know the kind of ones everyone wears the blue ones you sort of throw away after a couple of uses they'll probably be handing those out for free at the entrance if you don't have a mask making sure you properly sanitize your hands and whatever it may be um at the front of the store but i don't necessarily think they're going to turn anyone anyway but of course the people that are vehemently against it are going to be like under no way are they going to be able because if anything it goes against that kind of logic of not wearing a mask and you won't if you don't want to wear it you're not suddenly going to wear it when someone told you to wear it to go into a shop to buy a couple of eggs you're not going to do that so let's see how that happens and let's see how that rolls out but i'm glad at least because i think this is a the best way so far we have to get the virus under the control it's the best way to get things back to normal really 
you know we should be jealous man like we've seen videos of taiwan you see she have video in taiwan before i actually quickly read this let me see if i can get it i think it's in taiwan and they have effectively you know smashed the virus and they're now in a place where they can play baseball in crowded stadiums with actual audience in the crowd or an audience yeah a live audience watching them right people actually in the stadium shouting and screaming i think they were wearing masks as well but jesus man Let's see if i can get it taiwan baseball Let's see if i got it here hopefully it comes up fifth chester united that's, that's funny let's see, let's see if i can come up hold on du, 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 du. no it's not there but it was a video i saw i think i saw on social the other day that they were playing um just recently doesn't matter let's just get that off there but let's go back to the article at choice so this is from the bbc it says the following it says um coverings will be complimentary so those who fail to comply with the new rules will face a fine of up to 100 pounds the government is to announce the move will bring england into line with scotland and other major european nations like uh, spain italy and germany since mid-may the public have been advised to weigh face coverings in enclosed public spaces where they encounter people who do not usually meet who do they not usually meet sorry it was also been compulsory on public transport since the 15th of june health secretary matt hannock is expected to set out the new guidance on face coverings on tuesday they're designed to minimize the spread across coronavirus and also encourage people to return to the shop safely the announcement follows confusion about the government's intention in recent days with senior ministers suggesting on sunday that people should use their common sense rather than being compelled to cover up which is i generally want to understand because again i think you should always try to remain intellectually curious when everything concerning covid and coronavirus i think we're in such you remember you know i forgot what that stephen big there's a stephen pinker book that he read he wrote recently where he was talking about all the positives in the world i think this was sort of like a counterbalance as to everyone going on about everything being negative out there right he was saying no this we're actually living in, in some of the best of times right and we you know there's a lot of problems in the world but prior to covid we were on this upward trajectory it felt like right everything was just booming we we're all over the place so i think it's only fair to have some sort of level of sympathy with people who are really freaking out and aren't able to process what's going on or figure out what to do right um whether it's politicians whether it's people in general you know countries nations um you know sporting organization businesses if some people do a misstep don't be too harsh on them because i think this is really unprecedented times most people who are you know out there speaking the loudest haven't necessarily gone for any sort of hardship for the most part right maybe our parents have maybe our grandparents have but most of the people within the ages between let's say 18 and 55 haven't necessarily gone through any real struggle this is the one moment where we're sort of having to face an uncertain future so it's you know you, you can be excused for some things but i don't understand this whole approach in the uk where most of our politicians are really pushing this hands-off approach especially when you consider how high our numbers are especially in deaths considering compared to all the other european nations um I know we're out of Europe, but just in general, it's a comparison. And then, you know, and even if you believe, the, you know, this line that they were saying about, oh, we're just reporting it too honestly, that's why we're, our numbers are really high. Just in terms of optics and just when to be proud and, you know, wanting to set an example for everybody else, wouldn't you want to get that number down anyway, right? Or would you want to make sure you, you somehow stabilize it? Let's say you're right. Let's say we are just, you know, we are the bastions of honesty. We're just reporting everything clearly and really, you know, we're putting all the information out there. We're being transparent as we can. That's why our numbers are high. Don't just get it right. Why would you have one of your ministers coming on TV talking about how people should have used common sense in making sure that they, you know, get this virus under control and wearing a mask? Because so far, all we know, that's the only option we know how to fix things, right? Distance, what, um, you know, some basic hygiene and face coverings. That's the only thing that we know that's going to work to stop this, you know, invisible virus. We don't know anything else. We're so, you know, we're so green still in our understanding of how this thing affects people. Just the other day, I read a paper about how it affects people um, in different ways once they've recovered, right? Some people have like, you know, spinal issues, right? They suffer, they suffer flipping cognitively after the fact. So we're still learning things every day. So why wouldn't you just uh, err on the side of, you know, caution and be like, hey, if you go out and you're around people you don't know, you have to wear a face mask. You know, that that's it. If you go in a shop, it's a rule. That's it. It's not hard. 
Yeah, it's not difficult. And we don't need to do it for that long either. We just do it for maybe a couple of months, maybe a month and a half, whatever it may be, so that when we do start to open up, people are in good habits. And also we have a much better idea of where and how we can open up. Because at the moment, we're just sort of like throwing a, a dart at the pinboard. As much as I want to go to the gym at the end of the month, I'm, I'm a bit skeptical too. I'm thinking, hold on. They just, just announced that we're going to be wearing face masks. Compo- we have to wear face masks in shops compulsory on the 24th. The gym's open on the 25th. So they're going to give... So all that time, people like it's just doesn't. It's just odd, and it makes you think. Why didn't it just you know put it into place for tomorrow or next week? I'm assuming it's to, it's to give all the shops time to order things. I'm assuming maybe I don't know. It's just a. It's just odd. The whole thing is really odd to really understand. But again, I try to keep an open mind. Try to see it from the other side. Maybe it's a. They don't want to panic the nation. They don't want people going out there, you know, fighting and killing each other over face coverings. I don't know. But we're at the stage now. I don't think a lot of people are that worried. I think, you know, if you've got a piece of fabric in your house, you can make your own face covering in, you know, a couple of minutes. There's videos everywhere of how to make them. You can get most, I think most off licenses in my area, you know, most of those guys are super incredibly entrepreneurial and they've, you know, capitalized on it. They've ordered in a few from China that they're selling, you know, at a markup, don't get me wrong, but you can get a hold of one if you want. It's just a very weird situation to be in. Just see it from the outside in. Like, why are these guys really enthusiastically bad at their job politicians I say like why is it and they don't seem to ever get caught up on it it doesn't ever seem to be an issue it's just like you know you do your term and then that's it and you just hang around why are you hanging around you're consistently bad at your job like why there's no co- there's no consequences it, it, it seems like and you just seem to just like carry on as per unless of course you commit some sort of heinous crime and then it made me think about this lady again it's not you know it's obviously not fair to tease people but it made me remember this um this uh lady what's her name i think i've got here on the screen there she is maggie de Bloc. she's the health minister of belgium right and again she's getting a lot of stick because i think the belgian numbers aren't that great either and i think they've been rated as the poorest um performing in terms of dealing with corona when it comes to testing uh, when it comes to excess deaths and also when it comes to uh, supplying, you know, in places with adequate PPE. So they've been getting a lot of stick. And obviously she's the health minister and you're just looking at it just from an optics point of view. Again, doesn't really necessarily matter. She might be an absolute saint. But just from a plain optics point of view, this person being your health minister is just insane. And she got voted into that seat. Or, you know, it was somehow, con- it was somehow constructed that she would get voted in, whatever it may be. And she's, you know, to put it bluntly, she's morbidly obese. She's at risk more than anybody else would be to a uh, respiratory disease, a respiratory virus, sorry. And here she is leading the charge. It's just, you know, it's just, uh, it's just insane. And then on the other side of it, you got this guy. Huh? St. John's County Commissioner in fight to, uh, fight for of his life to, against coronavirus. And this is one of the dudes that was against um the mandated locked i think the mandate wearing a mask in florida of course it's florida thing so you know things happen in florida that you can't really explain right i think even people in america would say florida isn't really in america it's sort of like its own little sovereign place right it's just completely nuts over there but a guy that was very critical about you know mandatory face mask wearing in florida is now in critical condition and look at the picture if you're not watching this he is morbidly obese and if I read about the article here, it's really, 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 it's funny. It's only funny because it's sad, you know? It's just so, it's so avoidable, all of this. It's a St. John's com- County Commissioner who voted against the mask mandate is recovering from COVID-19, his daughter said on Friday. Paul Wardron won of three no votes on the countrywide mask um order last week is hospitalized said ashley warden zapata though the commissioner is still sedated and in critical condition the hospital is working hard to keep him comfortable and continuously monitoring him quote here says the following his blood gas levels have improved today and numbers are holding as a notes although we're not out of the woods today has been a good day the article continues it says this may be the beginning of recovery from warden who went into septic shock and was in the most c- critical of conditions the day before. Though Warden is on 2020 ballot, he is unopposed. Warden is not the only national for depletion to contact for, um, COVID in the recent days. Angela Nixon, a Jacksonville Democrat uh, running for the House State, also contacted the virus. Blah, blah, blah. But it's just, come on. Like, what? Me- and and, this, and then, then you got the issue with all of these um, 
COVID-19 deniers, right? You're kind of just feed, and, it, and but the weird thing is, again, maybe this is the odd, uh, odd kind of um, the odd part of the story. You'd think that stories like these, right, like this, you know, this governor was against COVID, was against the state mandated lock, state mandated um, things to wear a mask in Florida. He gets it. He's in really critical condition, so like he didn't get the flu version of COVID. He's got it for real. He's in hospital. He's in some sort of, you know, he's he's been sedated. So it's obviously bad, but he's recovering. That's good. Touch wood, he gets better. But it doesn't seem to, you know, change the mind of people that don't want to wear a mask. <coughs> Sorry. It doesn't change their mind. If anything, it just, they just kind of, it goes over their head and just continues shouting. That's a bit that's really interesting. Fair enough if you don't believe it. And then you see stories of people just getting better and you know things go on you could be like hey i told you guys you know pointing to the person see i told you it's no big deal why do you guys make a big deal out of it but to see people that were on your side get it and be in really bad shape and to see the people that weren't on your side get it and be in bad shape and see people that are dying from it and still not want to change your course that is really strange really really odd but you know i guess everyone has their thing in it i guess everyone has their thing what can you do Let's move on. It's got some other things to talk about here. Da, 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 da. Natural selection. Oh, another one. Natural selection at play. This is a, <laughs> this is a fun one, isn't it? This is an interesting, fun, happy go time one, right? Let's see if I can get up on you in time. Um, bar owner in Kentucky. So this one was weird because um, so I guess in Kentucky in America they've got this thing where they essentially uh were telling people that they had to wear masks in public places and i guess as a sort of um counter protest there are some people out there that got gathering around filming themselves basically you know um flouting the rules dancing singing jumping around sharing drinks you know just as a kind of um figurative middle finger to the politicians who are telling them to do you know the complete opposite and it's just bizarre to watch just a witness adults you know being this brazen <laughs> about the issue but hey i guess these things happen all over the country you know patrick from the town's end and what we're saying right now is fuck you we're not wearing any masks we are americans we're going to do what we want and we want to have fun so governor andy you know how childish that is we're Amer like fair enough we've got our freedoms we don't want to you know because that's the, again i try and give i try and give these people the biggest benefit of the doubt you know again you know if you don't agree with one you don't agree you don't agree with one in a mask you think that's impeding in your rights you think that's the first step to totalitarian rule they're then gonna insert chips in you take away your babies i understand cool but to somehow suggest to somehow then go and skirt and kind of you know lean into the oh it's not fun i want to have fun you're ruining my summer that's when it gets really ridiculous like all of our summers have been ruined don't you think everybody wants you know i'm sure because again, this is one of those things I'm sure the ultra rich would want to be, you know, in Cabo somewhere, sunning up and having a good time. But you, most celebrities, it looks like from the, from the looks of it, are quite careful about the optics of what that looks like. So they're kind of avoiding doing anything too lavish, right? Some people are, you know, doing their thing. But for the most part, they're being quite careful about what they do. You know, they're just held up in their mansions trying to make that fun and trying to make that look, look too rich. But no one's being outlandish with their money and their wealth and kind of throwing it in our face. Everyone's kind of being sensible, which is, you know, makes sense for them because they don't want any public back backlash. But then to have people on, you know, like this, just, I don't know. And again, who are you proving right or wrong in this situation? Because it's like a, it's like a, it's like a weird, um, it's like a weird show of, show of force, isn't it really? Because if you're right, you've had a time to drink and dance around with your friends and get pissed in the afternoon, right? And your kids are probably going to be worried where their parents are. And if you're wrong, one or two or more will be hospitalized. And you have to pay for that in America. It's not free. And for sure, you won't get any sympathy from your local community who already think you're a bunch of tools. It's kind of a weird situation to be in, isn't it? <clears throat> we love this bar. <laughs> And if you're just listening to this, there's a group of, um, there's a group of Caucasian women of, or Caucasian men and women of various shapes and sizes, 
uh, most so notably they're all you know very pasty very red a lot, lot of shorts a lot of beards and baseball caps turned backwards some figurative middle fingers in the air they're all you know arms around their shoulders lined up swinging from the side to side doing the quintessential barbecue white dance um whilst they hoot and holler with a band i'm assuming playing in the background and put a big smile on your face and the band is a guy playing on a set of drums that's the band i think effectively with a couple of led lights and a bluetooth speaker or an amp of some sort you know pumping out the good beats a couple of guy ferrari sort of impersonators here too at the front no come as you are oh there's a guy there at the back actually on the keys too so here's a bit of a band a band technically is more than two right or more than one what's a band technically i think it's two if you've got if you've got more than one you're basically a band Free shot! Hot damn! Be louder! Be louder. Have more fun. Come on, pretend like you're having the time of your life. You'd think this, this would be a good time to kind of, you know, I don't know, learn a skill, bake some bread like everyone else is on Instagram. But no, I want to be surrounded by my friends. I'm at Fireball. Hot damn work my mind when I was younger. Okay. Now the man's staring and pointing a middle finger at the camera. And that's why I've got to turn off because it's getting too aggressive. Weird, isn't it? Odd, odd people. Very, very odd people. Again, I'm, I'm all for it. You know, if you want to do your own thing, but it's this idea that you're somehow sticking it to the man. It's like, really? Are you? Or are you just playing Russian roulette with your own health? And you know. You got people in your, your family that love you and stuff, don't you? Right? Do you want to be around, right? Because again, if it's just, if it's the flu, it's the flu. But if you're wrong, the consequences are whew, consequences are harsh, isn't it? Super harsh. Then this other one, which is a <laughs> this other clip, which made me think about because obviously I'm really looking forward to going back to gyms. I think I've made, mentioned that a few times on here. Um, and but a part of me is also yeah, I've all, I'm, I'm I'm excited. Don't get me wrong, right? But obviously, a part of me is a bit, you know, worried because, of course, face masks and shops are going to be mandated on the 24th, but gyms are open on the 25th. What's going to happen? You know, whatever. Does that mean we have to wear a mask when we go to gym? That's going to be a bit awkward. Um, also, you know, enclosed areas such as the gym are the, you know, they're basically the breeding ground for respiratory uh, virus such as COVID-19, as proven in other cases around the world. Um Gym, gym that I go to mentioned previously doesn't really have any um, windows or anything. It's just a air conditioning unit. They don't necessarily open windows. It's sort of like the same way they have windows. Don't get me wrong, but they're sort of set up in the same way that they are in a hotel. They're just like kind of a decorative thing or maybe a way to kind of insulate the building, but you can't necessarily open them any way, shape, or form. So would they change that and make them um, open? Because I'm sure they have some sort of seal that they can break. Um, loads of questions. But just in general, I know that, you know, gyms already are a bit of a hit and miss place to go to in terms of like etiquette, like, you know, where you put, do you put your weights back? Do you put your plates back? Um, do you put back the bar? Um, do you ask people if they finish on their machine or you just wait and, you know, like a gentleman and hold, hope they finish soon? Um, you know, people that um, excessively want people to spot them and stuff. It's a whole little weird ecosystem, right? It's a whole little kind of, it's a little world you have to sort of navigate. And one of the things that's um, always kind of really confused me is the people that are, um, that are annoyed when you drop your weights. I've never really understood that. I can understand, no, I understand if you get, get annoyed, but I don't understand the compulsion to come over and tell that person off. Or get into some sort of verbal disagreement or whatever. That's the weird one. I remember it happened to me once in the gym. Um, and this lady, you know, bless her heart. She went directly to the person that was kind of managing the floor at the time. And just sort of like snitched and said, hey, that guy over there is dropping the waist. And I kind of only noticed last minute because of someone pointing and doing that whole like, you know, that whole like um, entitled white woman thing. Where they sort of like shake their head and put their hands on their hips. Um, and I looked up, I was like, what's going on there? I took out my headphones, and of course, as, I, as it came over, the guy was like, you know, she was shouting, oh, man, he's making too much noise, making too much noise. And I just, you know, you just, sometimes when you're just so, I guess when you're in the gym, because that's the best thing about it, you get, 
you're obviously surrounded by people, but you're so locked into what you're doing, you're not necessarily paying attention to anything around you. So I had to kind of, it took me a couple of minutes to sort of like gauge what the deal was. I didn't understand what the issue was. I was like looking around, what did I do? Did I take something? Is something on me? Like, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out. I was like, oh, the weights. And then we, then she started shouting at me, and I just didn't have anything more to say. I was just, you know, you just get caught sort of guard. You don't have an argument, so I just put my headphones back in and just started lifting again. I just completely ignored it and carried on. It was probably the best response at the time, but I can't take any credit from it, credit for it. I didn't, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't like, you know, oh, I want to stick something, you know, I want to stick a middle finger up in her face and not answer her back. I just didn't have the, I didn't have the energy. I guess I'm working out. I'm, I'm all hot and sweaty, covered in, you know, weightlifting chalk. The last thing I want to do is get into a slanging match with somebody because they think I've dropped the weights too loud. I mean, I might, I might have, I don't know. Maybe I did, I didn't. But the compulsion to come up to somebody and tell them that in the gym is really strange. I never really understood that. It's a very, very odd thing. It's a particular type of person I would do. And again, I really would like to understand what is the issue. Because if you're in the gym, right, you're not going to be in there forever. You're going to be in there for maybe what? Minimum, let's say 40 minutes, maximum two hours to be to be to be kind of uh generous maybe an hour and a half if someone's dropping their waist loudly just move somewhere else or do like everyone else does and bring your headphones there's not a gym i've been to unless it's a crossfit box right that has good music they don't exist because crossfit boxes are, at least they, they're able just to plug in their spotify and just like whack it on the system and play whatever i think commercial gyms have a lot more hoops to jump through but most gyms play terrible music or they don't play anything at all some gyms are just like you don't want to play anything you just bring your own stuff but everyone brings headphones no one does especially women women always bring headphones they just don't want to be a, uh, um they don't want to be annoyed right but everyone brings headphones so just bring headphones and plug them in and if you're if it's too loud still move somewhere else they need to come over to somebody and kind of tell them off it's strange and this video kind of exemplifies it it's an old school one anyway but it just got me thinking about what's going to happen when I go there. so it's a guy basically deadlifting in the gym somewhere in america i think it might be i'm, I'm assuming it's like a global chain gym it's got you know the signature blue and yellow coloring and an absolute psycho comes across and basically tells them off Right, he's dropping away, so standard and he's he's being he's being an actual good dude. I'm not sure if that's a platform, but he's actually got um mats on the floor to sort of like absorb some of the shock. And it's still an issue. Another good death lip. Look, and that guy rages up, here he goes, where is he? He's coming, he's coming. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> I'm waiting for him to come over. Where is he? Is he there? There he goes. He's coming out. There he is. There he is. Look, he jumps, rages over. He walks up to the kid. He's doing loads of sets of dead this. Look. Look at this. And as he pulls it up, for his last one of his last sets he drops the bar he p puts his hand on the bar and drops it on the floor which obviously hurts the guy's wrist because i'm assuming he's got them wrapped up and who does that what psych what kind of psychopath would do that to somebody especially an older dude doing that to a kid like what is your problem is he the manager of the of the gym does he own it okay fair but still there's a way to go about these sort of things and kind of you know stepping in front of somebody as they pull up a huge amount of weight and then placing your hand on a barbell as they're pulling like come on <laughs> insane in it insane they get into a verbal argument at the end the kid ends up leaving but it's just bizarre it's up and i hope anyway i'm assuming this won't happen because we're living in a post-covid world right i'm assuming this won't be a thing but because you know no one wants to get near anybody no one's going to want to touch you right and start having conversations and shouting or whatever you know we all know about the droplets but it's just a weird person that does that in it don't you think? 
like coming over because you're smashing the weights. And again, maybe I'm maybe I'm I'm off the mark here, and I'm, and I don't know how annoying it can be when people are slamming weights on the floor. But if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Do you, are you the type of person that goes over people and tells them off in the gym because they're doing something you don't like, or do you just do like what most adults do and just you know get on with your own life, mind your own business? This is like the epiphany, epitome of like a male Karen, isn't it? Like so bothered about other because just so bothered because someone else is inconveniencing you that you have to go over and let them know to stop doing that thing that's making you feel inconvenienced it's like come on man get a life god damn these people but hey what can you do um another one we have blah, 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 blah. oh we have the most legendary for, oh, no, let's not do another i'll leave that for another day actually the, those two are the best ones i've got that one you remember that the one where the dude's arguing with the cyclist quite possibly my most favorite um freak out video ever he's sort of arguing with the cyclist he starts to chase him down the road and slips and ends up kind of tumbling down you know the side the sidewalk yeah it's it's incredible absolutely incredible but we'll move on to this one um to some trainer news sneaker news in that respect um it, it seems like the sneakers haven't really stopped have they right the drops they haven't stopped they haven't really i think apart from the travis scott's um trail air max 2 270s whatever they were called that came out recently they're the only things that i can think of that will push back maybe i can know maybe those um furry dunks have been there's been a couple of things pushed back right to later date but nothing like delayed until like september or next year everything's been pushed back a couple of months but for the most part sneaker releases have been dropping things have been popping out they've been pumping them out brands have just been like you know what if that let's put an instagram competition up let's send it to see the same 17 people we send our stuff to and it gets us going right and it's been interesting to watch from the outside um in general some stuff has been good some stuff has been bad but you know it's been hit and miss here and there but there's these two sneakers that i've kind of got my eye on well let's say three right that kind of got my eye on first of all is the jound um new balances right the, i think this might be the third iteration of new balance shoes that he's done um and again might be my favorite of the 992 one of my favorite um, new balance models and this is from just fresh kicks it says john unveiled a second signature colorway of the new balance 992 um let's see what it says in the text it says uh more 992 is coming this year and we should not be and we could not be more excited this week the canadian blog and design studio john showed uh off their latest colorway which is a which coats the retro runner in the stunning shades of brown um so let's continue here we have two colorways right we've got this kind of i'm assuming a sand sort of colorway and one with a sort of like an olive gray upper um they've got a bit of an update here from the 7th of the 10th it says although not the best quality what appears to be an official images that are coming down collaboration are below check them out below and we'll be sure to update you guys once to get a date so no date in place at the moment but these are probably one of my favorite shoes i've seen so far that are due to come out like really beautiful design of course 992s are you know synonymous with steve jobs and that whole sort of like normal core look or whatever that was popular a few years ago but they sort of kind of gained a new life it feels like within the last couple of years they become a bit of a staple in the whole like you know streetwear menswear sort of like people that stand and weird angles and do that thing with their feet kind of scene but just generally as a cool sneaker to wear i think they're really cool i think they're really comfortable they're really versatile um um and yeah if you want something that isn't too flashy like you look at especially look at this picture on the screen right we've got a picture of the new balance the jound the two colorways and on the sidebar we've got an announcement about these easy 350s in a zion colorway and we've got the off-white um jordan 4 women's and sale they're the complete opposite of those sort of shoes right they're not that showy um they're a bit understated um they probably would lend themselves to a more mature client customer it doesn't necessarily mean just being an older person but just somebody that needs to you know if you don't you know if you're not up to wearing gr shoes from jd sports but you still want to have a bit of spat you know a bit of spice in what you wear and you know it'd be a little bit nice then you go for something like this and these are a really really good option um i like the fact that the midsole hasn't been really touched that much it's just a classic sort of application of changing the upper and you've got the kind of branding here on the back of heel tab as well which is definitely going to unfortunately add to its resale value or with this rarity but i think everything concerning john sells out pretty well anyway even when he makes like hoodies and stuff it's a pretty popular um he's a pretty popular person on social everyone's kind of aware of him now at the moment you know i used to read his blog or his uh mood board the best website was the end bit of the end credits and the photo was like um 
this is going to be the best website you've ever read or something like that, right? I used to read it back there when it was on Blogspot, so that was ages ago. Um, and now you sort of migrate into a, a fully fledged design studio, consultancy, and all that sort of good stuff. So um, they obviously know what they're doing, but unfortunately, with that comes popularity. With popularity comes more eyes. With eyes means more, you know, stuff sells out more. And casual consumers like myself, people that don't necessarily buy bots or, you know, are up to date with everything that's going on you know it's pretty difficult to get stuff but you know the best options you know you enter the raffles you put your name in you put your name in the hat and hope it gets pulled out but god damn it he's a beautiful really really well done man suede all over i think apart from the 3m bits everything is either suede or nubuck it looks like right there's not one bit of it that's anything else which is gorgeous to see and then you've got those great laces too sort of i'm, I'm assuming the laces are kind of off-white sale or bone colorway in there oh, okay the material the other material there is mesh okay it looks like it's all suede but it's not we've got a bit of mesh here on the toe box and we've got a leather on the n logo on the side which is a really good addition actually it makes them pop really well um because it must be tempting when you're designing shoes it would in two sort of tonal colorways to switch the logo colorway on one or the other especially if it's a darker base right you'd you'd be tempted to sort of like switch the n um color of the logo on the green pair to maybe a white or a off-white sail or the bone color of the laces or maybe something a little bit you know maybe something be a navy but to keep it the same it's really that's really shows your confidence in your kind of design principles or the codes that you're kind of enacting on that shoe it does go a long way to show how confident you are in what you're making i would say because I'd be tempted to switch it, but I think it was really, I think it actually looks better that way. It's a little bit more subtle, and yeah. And for like I said before, for sure, this, you know, the fact that they've got jam written on the back of the hill is definitely going to add a bit more to the overall price, you know. It always end up doing that. But I'm a big fan of these. I think it looks stupendous. I can't wait to find out when they release so that I can catch my L's like a gentleman. <laughs> and then the other shoe that I was really interested in um, was the Hiroshi Fujiwara Sakai Nike LDV Waffles now I've got a pair of the LDV Waffles I don't have them here to show but I've got the Sakai ones that were what purple and whatever that colorway I don't wear them much because unfortunately I have the feet of uh I don't know I have weird feet I've obviously everyone's got feet where you know one's one foot is bigger than the other but I've also got the issue where my foot from front to back is pro it could it could be right it could be a size 10 uk 10 eu 44 45 us 11 but once but because the front of my foot is a bit wider it then depends on the shape of the trainer so if it's an air max i need to go maybe a half a size up so I maybe get a 10.5 uk 11 and a half us and if i then wear an air force one i get i can sometimes depending on if it's a depending on when it was made if it's like an early 2000s um air force or if it's like a 98 below i can probably get away with a uk nine and a half but usually i can get away with a um usually my main size is us 11 in that one so it's a really strange my feet seem to like you know fluctuate so when i wear my sakai ldv waffles in purple they're uk 10 my toes seem to sometimes scrunch up well, I sometimes get, you know, my my pinky toe rubs up a little bit. But I know if I would have got a size 11, they'd be too big. And sometimes it's hard to get, you know, rarely, not rarely, but it, it, they don't always make half sizes in collaborations. So it can be a bit annoying that way. But, you know, what can you do? And usually if it's a UK 10, I can get away with it by just taking out the insole. But, you know, with the LVD waffles, if you've got a pair, you know that the insoles, you know, it's non-existent, basically. It's not really an insole, it's a bit of foam. So taking that out doesn't really make that much difference. But hey, what can you do? But it was announced the other day. News leaked. Again, this is from another one from Just Fresh Kicks. It says, the first look at a fragment in Nike at Sakai LDV Waffle. Um, we've got the news here. We've got fragment Nike and Sakai all will be teaming up for the formation of a strong group of three of the new LDV Waffles in Nike and Black Tones. It's cool to see because obviously that Sakai lady has been part of Nike for a while she's been you know she got she's got a lot of support and a lot of um backing from people within nike who are really big fans of her work of course you know hiroshi fujiwara is synonymous with all the great you know nike collaboration we know from back in the day htm all the stuff that he's done himself under the fragment moniker under his own name as well 
actually he's only done that using no name with the with the HTM. Most of it's come through Fragment, but we know we know what you know what his CV is. So to bring all these three um, entities together on a model that has done, you know, I think of all the um, I can, f I think there might be apart from maybe I can't think of another collab that I've seen one. book here as well that i'm a big fan of that i read from time to time a collection of some of his biggest hits but yeah um i've always been a big fan of hiroshi i love everything that he does so i think this collaboration is a really 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 good effort from all involved we quickly move here make sure everything is working so let me quickly read this for you um it says if the kind of nike ldb waffle was never enough for you the dew um, has added uh, sorry the duo has added the help of fragments of expertise on new silhouette while the sakai hype has only gone up over time with great colorways and limited stock the duo really didn't need help the, okay let's not skip over the text we don't know what we're looking at so we've got a uh, tonal navy tonal base on the upper of an ldv waffle sakai you know what that looks like and then we've got the application of the signature fragments um two thunderbolts at the top well, sort of like you know where the mud guard I guess would be at the front of the shoe. Um, mostly it's made up of navy um, suede. It looks like, or maybe combination of suede and nubuck with that sort of nylon um, middle midsection there. Two swooshes in both in white as well. No change in materials there, and that's about it really, isn't it? The tongue colors are different on each. What uh, on the tongue on the top has got the classic sort of Nike sportswear tongue colorway, black and orange, and on the bottom has got a tonal. So that's it, really. Really kind of classic. You would call it basic, but I call it minimal sort of a, approach to the design. And it's again something I'd easily wear. Like you could see these getting worn a lot. If they if they brought this color out colorway out as a GR, it would sell like hotcakes. You know what I mean? So let's not get it un get it twisted. Of course, it probably could have been you know added a spruce up a bit but i love it oh i didn't see that as well i love the back heel tab the fact that it's silver i'm not sure if that's is that the actual model so we've got two colorways here we've got a colorway that has the heel tab that's white and then we've got a colorway here below that's got the heel tab as silver maybe that's a knowing them knowing nike and fragment maybe this is the friends and family version with the silver heel tab with the red um, nike logo that reminds me of some old runners from back in the day like that one that would they used for sprinting that was sort of like foil print i forgot what that was called but i like the look of this man this is flipping bl beautiful yeah nike ldv waffle sakai and fragment linking up that that might mean we might see a capsule select maybe yeah I, i'd assume that would might mean we'll see some sort of capsule collection within the sakai what spring summer 20 is it here spring summer 21 collection when paris fashion week um begins in september right maybe that might be it because sakai always sort of like showcased the nike collaborations during the runway shows and it so it wouldn't surprise me if they end up doing something like that that could be a thing who knows um but keep an eye out for them when they do release anyway and i'll sure will be trying my best to get a pair myself and i'm sure as with most of these things i'll probably be catching loads of l's but you know there's no it's fun to try you know it's fun to it's fun to dream sometimes <laughs> Oh God Almighty! What's what's happening to my life? There was a time back in the day when I used to be able to just to queue, you know, and just get stuff. Or sometimes, it really, in the rare occasions, rarely, rarely, you got the opportunity to sometimes call in the favor, right? I'm not necessarily that kind of guy. I don't really like asking people for things, but sometimes you had the ability to just, you know, you, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Especially when I had something to offer. Especially when I used to work in a shop where you had a discount to offer somebody. That's when it really came into play. You're like, okay, hey. I know this is limited, I know, but you know where I work, right? You know I've got something for you as well. And I was always the kind of person that was really open and really free when it came to the discounts. I wasn't, I've never been, a, I guess because I don't necessarily, I never felt a sense of ownership working in the store. I always knew my role, right? I never kind of had this inflated sense of self where I thought like, yeah, I'm the big guy, I'm, I'm, I'm here, so this is my, it's like those, not, you know, I love the brand, but let's use Supreme as an example, right? Supreme especially nowadays right some of the kids that work in there go on as if like you know i don't know they're jim jb's son do you know what i mean when they're not they're just you know kids that work in a shop but back in the day that was part of their law in it if you went into supreme part of your law was that you know or part of the law was that they would um 
kind of vibe you out right to kind of make sure they kept the shop pure and it was all about skaters and stuff now of course it's not the fact you know now it's just populated by you know asian tourists and hordes of europeans buying up whatever they can buy so they can look cool to their friends back at school which is no bother but you know for a guy such as myself that's been a fan of since you know the early 2000s it's hard to take but i think that helped me when i was working in the shop because when it comes to when it came to kind of you know exchanging you know favors i was more than willing to give anyone whatever they wanted you know i'd go without for myself just to make sure i can get that exchange or get that kind of discount in their place and give them mine i didn't necessarily care um because i knew you know i was just a i was just a you know i was just a foot soldier in the in the store and you know i had to keep the eye on the prize on what that other person had but now where i'm just you know over here and i've kind of purposely pulled away from that scene and i'm not really involved you know there is little to no opportunity to get any of those things that's the only thing i kind of slightly regret <clears throat> from my time hanging out in that street where scene and being a part of it and you know trying to work, work my way through there which i wouldn't do again to be honest and if anything i'll just you know make my own brand and kind of operate from the fringes but the only regret i have from it is i didn't really cultivate many relationships i wasn't necessarily you know i didn't necessarily put my hand out i wasn't well not put my, i didn't necessarily kind of put myself in places where that could happen i didn't maintain relationships i'm not i'm not the kind of you know catching up with people guy i'm not i might catch don't get me wrong i might send you a random dm i'm not gonna ever meet you and have a drink i mean that's not gonna happen unfortunately i just got my own little issues when it comes to meeting people and stuff i don't know whatever <laughs> um but that's the only thing i regret in that respect so if if you're a kid and you're you know trying to maneuver in a scene and you're trying to you know do your thing set up your little instagram page do your little brand you got your little your fashion label that you're doing you're customizing stuff you're consulting you're doing a bit of styling marketing whatever it may be do whatever it may be the one thing that i can say one one only advice i can give and again i'm a nobody because you know my time had, has been and gone but the only advice i can give you is try your best to cultivate it how should i say dump burn bridges I can't honestly say don't burn bridges because everyone's personality is different. I don't give two Fs in it. So I burn bridges all the time because I don't really think it's a bridge. I just think if you're a dick, I'll call you out for it. I'll just keep it moving. But if you want to be successful <laughs> in that industry, it's probably best not to burn any bridges and to sort of try and have, um, don't take things too personally. That's the thing I'd advise to say. Don't take two things too personally. Build your network and don't burn bridges don't things don't take things too personally because everyone's you know it's a real crab in a barrel mentality in that, in that most subcultures um that have little ecosystem that's attached to it um they usually have a little crabs in the barrel sort of mentality right because they all think there's not many opportunities which you know is really silly and short side especially in the streetwear sneaker game i think sneaker game is a lot valued at what a billion dollar industry sneakers alone so i'm sure streetwear when you add it on top of it is you know multi-billions so there's obviously opportunities for success opportunities for riches opportunities for you to take your take your to get away from the position that you're in now to kind of you know further your prospects to put your boys on there's opportunity there's going to be a chance varying levels of successes you know not everyone can be um ian connor not everyone can be um the kid that does dirt bag not everyone can be there not everyone can be in that studios but if you want to do your little thing in the scene you can do it you just gotta know where you fit in so as long as you're as long as you're kind of doing that you're fine right as long as you're doing that you're fine don't burn the bridges of course that's you know that they don't need to be you don't need to explain that too much right i think you know burning bridges thing is just people can just be people can get but hurt about things right and hmm, people can get but I guess you don't want to burn your bridges just in case you need someone for something, right? Or just in case they can help you out in some way, shape, or form. It's a little bit fake and it's a little bit surface level, but it is what it is, isn't it? That's the industry that you're in, right? You're essentially making clothes. You're essentially committed to a life of materialism. You have to, you know, you have to be comfortable with somehow, you know, giving, figuratively speaking, giving someone your ass so that you can get forward in life. It is what it is. So in order to do that, you just can't burn bridges. You just have to be able to, um, just absorb whatever comes your way that you feel is negative or that kind of makes you feel away you just have to just be able to just kind of withstand it and be resilient as much as you can so that once the opportunity comes for you to show and prove boom you can and no one's got a bad to say about you because you know you've essentially been a good dude 
Um, and then, of course, build your network, which is probably the most important one. I think a good example of that is Virgil, right? Virgil is probably the classic example of how, how important it is to build your network. Yeah, you can say Kanye put him on, and if he wasn't with Kanye, he wouldn't be anywhere. But most of his genius has come from his ability to cultivate a network of people who genuinely think they're his friend or I wouldn't say it. that's bad sounds bad but they generally think they're friends they're all friends I don't know they're all friends right? let's say they're all friends he has a group of friends that he's been able to cultivate over the years that have formed his network that all kind of you know influence and you know kind of inspire and sort of add to the things that he's doing and the good thing about it is because he's so successful everyone in his network that has any sort of you know connection with him is going to immediately start kind of boasting about it from the rafters shouting oh i know him i know him i know him i know him," which then kind of expands his own network because those people that are adjacent to that person are then going to say oh i know somebody that knows him and then that network then becomes multidisciplinary right the people that are scattered all over the world in various different industries um and of course you never know when that could be handy because i could Im imagine for instance i don't know what the story is, but let's imagine for instance one of virgil's friends who he used to help i don't know one of virgil's friends who he knew who works in a company that does merchandising was helping him out make stuff for being sure back in the day that person then goes and works um that then that person then goes end up marrying somebody who's the lead creative for flipping ikea then suddenly there's a connection there because of that one person right and then that person's the one I recommend. I don't know what the story was of Virgil and Ikea, but I imagine that was a story. That's why that's the importance of having a network of like cultivating or just kind of keeping people around you that are sort of in the same similar sort of, you know, um, scene as you um, within your network, you know, collaborating with stuff, just kind of hanging out, talking, sharing ideas, um, recommending movies and music to each other, whatever it may be, just so you can obviously expand your field of influence your your field sorry your field of your no so more so, so you can expand the amount of inspiration that's coming your way or information right you don't want to just be like you know only hanging around with one set of people you'd want to have your network be as varied as it can be it doesn't have to be your real life either especially with the beauty of social media you can just do it all online but that's super important i think if you want to get forward in life in any scene mostly but i think mostly especially in street fashion side of it sneaker design you need to have that you need to have that ability to you know not take too not f take things personally because you just can't you don't you never know who's going to be you never know that person that was rude to you before you were trying to get into some exclusive club might end up being this person the person that was you know that you kind of cussed out an email might end up being that person you know I mean you never know when those people where those people could end up or they never know where you could end up so ne never take things too personally it is what it is if someone says something rude just kind of you know walk the dust back of course, build your network, and of course, what's the other thing I said? Build your network, don't get it too, too seriously, and I don't know, one of the, but those two are probably it, probably, if you want to make in that scene, I think those two will be it. Um, that would be my advice on that one. Moving on in, we have an update on Crystalia. Yeah, this is a, this is a funny one. So, obviously, you guys are aware, I've spoken about this before, Crystalia has essentially, you know, what, the last three months or so two months his life got turned upside down due to something no it was such an innocuous thing as i'll read looking at it back it seemed as if this one female who chris might or might have not had any sort of sexual encounter with was just bored at home watching netflix and it seemed like unbeknownst to her she had no idea chris D'Elia was starring in you so she puts her netflix on watches this show and then suddenly you know i'm assuming because of you as well the netflix is, does that thing where you're watching when when netflix does an annoying thing where when you watch a new when you watch a, a show for the first time it shows you the most recent season it doesn't show you from the beginning so she probably started from season two saw crystal lee and won the scenes i was like hey i know this guy and and then as it you know as the show carried on she then was, you know, spoiler alert, she figures out that this guy is a sexual predator or, or yeah, or he's kind of, yeah, he's a sexual predator in the show on you. And she's like, hey, I've got experience with this guy in real life and he does that. And then, that's, then she goes on Twitter, she she talks about her experience and suddenly a whole, you know, flipping plat platoon of women come out and accuse her Chris of the same thing. And then it turns into a, an opportunity for people to meet two other comedians with innuendos, just the, the industry is toxic. Just an entire whole thing happened, right? Just of that one innocuous tweet. And then um, 
it got to a point where all these friends had to kind of scramble to say something right to react to it because the problem wasn't that he was um being a sexual pest to these girls of age the issue was that supposedly he was trying to like it seemed like what they were insinuating was that allegedly chris was actively pursuing girls under age for sexual gratification right that's what the terms were which were, which was of course you know that's what the allegation were, which of course put you in pedo category right and everyone knows you know especially in hollywood you get that on you and you're done for in it there's no way you're coming back off that you could you could probably if you if you've got a good enough lawyer or you have a good enough image you could maybe get away with murder if you're a celebrity i don't know maybe you could bounce back you probably could look at oj simpson he's thriving and surviving out here but i think being a pedo is is there's no way you can come back from that no matter how beloved you are so that came out and that was big news i was like okay that's that we have to take it seriously so the stories keep coming out and then obviously the comedians have to scramble his friends are replying and that was the first warning sign for me the fact that it was such a egregious allegation that it just i think the moment it, for me personally again this is just coming from a dude's point of view i'd say if i hear about a guy being you know um creepy and sliding into random girls dms just doing what i don't know just doing what a young guy would do even if they didn't have his position or didn't have his privilege and being crystal clear, i'm not too mad at it is it annoying yes is it embarrassing yes is it um morally not right thing to do if that person has a partner yes of course but people cheat people lie it is what it is right that i'm not having much of an issue with the issue of course is when it comes to him potentially dealing with minors right that's where it gets a bit funny but then at that point or not funny it's when it gets really serious at that point if you're his friend that's where it starts to become a thing of like okay i'm not crafting a statement and putting it up on social media i'm not going to say anything in public because i might number one incriminate myself somehow unbeknownst to me you never know what you might say in the heat of the moment that might make you look really mad especially in a court of public opinion and number two i might make things worse for the person accusing because it takes the shine out because that's a problem too that happens the accuser comes out with an allegation and then the people coming up to defend or lend an ear are so powerful and popular they sort of drown out the actual accuser which is the complete opposite of believable women so you just shut the fuck up wait for everything to settle down and kind of see where the evidence falls not even falls but just see what transpires see what comes of this issue what is the actual truth of the matter from what we can ascertain and look you know of course brendan shaw and brian callan got on camera and like crying like babies which is really horrible to see you know they, they supposedly were best friends with this guy and immediately threw him under the bus callan was like oh i never told to this guy i don't really know him that well i never saw anything him or his agent whoever you believe goes on and goes ahead and deletes every image of brian callum with chris on his instagram they take you know like insane stuff brendan is sobbing and stuff and it's just nonsense isn't it nonsense reply You're just like what is going on here this guy's not been he's not having his day in court we don't know we don't have any evidence we've just seen these screenshots messages and accounts but we don't know anything and then guess what time progresses and we get to a point now where what is what the allegation actually is and what the truth is are completely different the truth of the matter is that from what we've seen so far especially after two months or so with various other articles coming out is that most likely they're not chris is a creep most likely they're not chris is a really bad date right he doesn't necessarily pay the girls any attention he's not very, yeah he's not a very attentive he doesn't seem to necessarily care about their general well-being or he doesn't necessarily take any pride in how they are going to feel on that day he doesn't try to make it special he just essentially slides in their dms gets them to come to a comedy club and then smack bang boom off you go son and of course these girls are young impressionable they have a heightened sense it's like you know i'd imagine seeing chris the way he is on social media and then seeing him in real life you'd be like what the hell's going on it's a complete opposite of who he is on social i get it so they're disappointed they're annoyed right that they meant to meet their hero who you've probably taken a bit of advantage of them because i don't miss that's, that's why i don't really agree with the whole that dynamic i don't think you should be pursuing your fans i think that's a bit weird right if, if some groupie wants to hook up with you fair enough whatever but you shouldn't be going after your fans right? that's a bit odd right you shouldn't be kind of trying to sleep with them you should just be keeping them at arm's length in that respect, in that respect. but if you are going to do it you gotta treat them a bit nicer in it so i think that's what he's guilty of is, is he a nonce probably not from what we've seen so far but all these friends whitney cummings as well another one that was getting all hysterical and you know complaining that this was some sort of affront to her and she somehow made it all about her and all this sort of wacky nonsense stuff like just the epitome of terrible friends but one person that has stood fast and kind of um has really been a good friend with this guy 
with his Chris D'Elia has been this dude called uh, Mike Leonushi who is ref- kindly referred to as Chris's open in the podcast and he basically made a statement um, detailing exactly how troubling it's been um, dealing with this whole issue in public and I'm going to play a bit of it now people people come on let's play it first of all let's a lot of people and the and and in the previous weeks they, they they i would get messages from people who who were nice who were actually like i guess fans oh, or, or whatever uh or people that knew me and they'd be like why why are you staying silent why like why are you not defending your friend publicly and i and and, I, and i'm like like first of all, here here's what's crazy to me. I don't know anyone a response. I don't know anyone a response. This is what's crazy about this world is, I would be online, and all this shit was going on about my best friend, and I, I'm seeing it, and I know what I know, and then people are like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna say? And then you see other comedians saying stuff. You see comedians attacking, and you're like, well, this is so weird. And it's just like, why 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 do I don't even know you people? Yeah, I'm thankful that I have subscribers and followers, but I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you. And that's the truth of the matter. And that's something that I just never understood at the time. And again, maybe it's my warped idea of friendship. I generally think like there is obviously a, there's a there's a how do I explain this in a clear way? There is obviously a large swaths of the population that are in uproar whenever something happens with a celebrity, right? They always like shocked and appalled. Oh my god, I can't believe he did this. I can't believe she did that. But for the most part, most of these celebrity dramas that we hear about, public figure dramas or gossips or, you know, missteps, you can usually exp- you, there's usually no explanation, but there's usually an example that you can pull out from your own personal experience. Obviously, you have a group of friends, somebody that you know, a family member who's gone through something similar. They're not usually they're not stories that are just so far fetched, right? Whether it's some sort of adultery, whether it's um, some sort of domestic dispute, whether it's a messy divorce, whether it's you know um, conflict with the children. We've all got the same sort of issues in and amongst our own little communities. So when people get all hot and bothered about issues, it generally is a little bit like, okay, relax and chill out, right? But there's also a part of me that's like, when those things happen to people that are in your family, you don't disown them, right? You so if somebody got Unless, again, unless it's something super heinous, like, you know, they're a serial rapist or they're a serial murder. For the most part, most of the shitty things your family members do, you just sort of forgive it and move on. Or you choose to not be in their company, right? But you don't necessarily go out there and publicly make a statement or, you know, decry them on social. You don't do that, right? And if you do, you're a w- idiot. You shouldn't be, you know, going out there kind of putting your family on blast on your platform because you don't agree with their actions. It is what it is. You just continue and move on. Just don't talk to them. It's not that big of a deal. So when it happens, when this happened, I have sympathy with him because I do think it was a bit unfair that fans were sort of pestering him and telling him to, you know, it, it came from a good place. I think most of the fans wanted him to back up Chris so that Chris wouldn't get cancelled because they love Chris. And maybe they saw the fact that he was kind of carrying on as normal as a sort of an affront. Like, how dare you? This guy's life is getting torn apart. He brought you on the road. He's your opener. He's your kind of boss and you're not defending him. But... There's so many things that got, I think that's the one thing that a lot of people don't really have a perspective on. And I think maybe that's why everyone should probably read the Mark Ronson, So You've Been Publicly Shamed book, right? It's a okay. seminal book, really, really important book. It's a really quick read, excellent writer is Mark Ronson, But it really puts into perspective what actually goes on in a person's brain as they're getting cancelled. And that was back in the, that was like, what, maybe five or six years ago when that book was written, right? Um, and things have changed even more so now with the polit- current political climate, right? So I can only imagine the kind of stress um, it must put on you or, how you know, with everybody also knowing the power that they hold because everyone kind of knows that, you know, everyone talks about power imbalances, but you know for the most part, if you get, if you're in a position where you feel as if you've been wronged by a corporation or by somebody that was kind of on paper powerful, more powerful than you, you can effectively end their career with a couple you know flick of the buttons flick of the wrists or flick of the thumbs you can you know what you can do so that must obviously add a heightened sense of anxiety to somebody when their friend is going through something a good friend like oh my god like if i say the wrong thing 
I could dis- not dis- only destroy his life, also mine and everyone else. So, you know, it's a really nervous thing. It's not easy, I'd imagine, being somebody's friend that's a public figure and also being pushed to make a response. So I've got a lot of sympathy for him in that respect. And I think, you know, he did come, he, you know, he doesn't really owe anyone an explanation, isn't it? The best thing you can do for your friend when they're going through something is, guess what? Be a friend. Do a response. The only person I owe is my friend. All I have to do is pick up the phone, call him and be like, yo, this is crazy. I know who you are. I know you are a great guy with a great heart and would never do anything wrong. And this is insane. And I have your back and I love you. That's my responsibility as a... And I agree that 100%. And then the last bit I play from this bit is him mentioning something briefly about the TFAT K boys. Um, yeah. <laughs> and just got to showing it. Like, you need to pick your friends better. But yeah, this is a bit where he mentions it. Let's get out of here. People need to make sure they pick the right friends and not just, you know anyone that will take them but i think this this section really kind of drums it home let's see if it loads my computer is being slow because i've already got too many tabs open google chrome die 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 come on here we go here we go is it coming up no, here, people fucking getting getting attacked by this mob and they get scared and they bail some of these people are good friends and they bail like you watch all these podcasters fucking bail like the fighter and the kid bailed. Winnie they didn't Cummings. even give it 24 hours, exactly. bro. They didn't even wait 24 hours. They fucking put out a video. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I'm scared. They, dude, they'll even tell you they regret doing that. That was the worst thing they could have done. But do they, they regret it? They fucking blew up in their face. But they didn't even. They got, and, and, and like, I, I don't. I can't get mad at these people, at these other comics who, who are just like, oh, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say. Da, da, da. Like, I can't get mad at them because they panicked. They panicked. And they'll tell you they panicked. But that's the interesting part of me, for me, on this issue, is that I think this is maybe a cautionary tale to everybody sort of like trying to make it in Hollywood or trying to have a career in the entertainment industry. You, there needs to be, there needs to be an acceptance that you're obviously going to be swimming in a sea full of sharks, right? Everyone is essentially your friend until they're hungry, right? And they just sort of like have to, you know, do what they have to do to survive. But I think if you're going to come into it, you have to, if you, de- if you, you know, which I would then advise, try your best to make your career outside of Hollywood, especially now with the advent of podcasting and YouTube and streaming on Twitch and the internet. So you don't, Patreon, you don't need to be within the Hollywood system to make it and be successful. You can do your own thing on your own little island figuratively, make a few money and just do your own thing and not worry about um, being under pressure to make public statements or whatnot. But if you are going to do it, the best thing to do is to ensure that you have a solid group of friends, which looks like Chris Delia did have, that you came into it prior to you being successful. Friends that you've kind of had around from school, maybe friends that you met on the on the kind of amateur circuit, wherever they may be. Friends that, are, that have at least seen you sleeping on someone's floor. Friends that you've had to maybe share a slice of pizza with. So that when things do go wrong or when people turn on you or when the, you know, you're not the hot stuff in the industry anymore, you still have people that you can go home to who will, you know, remind you of everything that you've achieved or who will make you feel good or who just be there for you and be supportive if you go through a really, you know, public um, incident or public allegation or, you know, um, such as what Chris Ali has allegedly gone through or is going through now at the moment. It's not allegedly because he's actually going through it. But however, that's the best thing that you can do. Really ensure that you have a good base, um, a good solid uh, base of friends around you that have been around you from, you know, at least before you got successful. That's going to really help because if you depend on having, if you kind of, if you kind of trick yourself into believing the friends that you meet once you're in the industry who are gassing you up are going to be there when things go bad, you are badly mistaken. Brian Cannon was one of Chris's best friends. They did the ten minute podcast together for years. One of the, one of my favorite podcasts of all time, man. Legendary. Him, Will Sasso, and Brian Callan. Right, Chris Lee, Brian Callan, Will Sasso did a ten minute podcast. One of the best comedian podcasts that ever existed. And then he's deleting all the pictures of him on his flipping social media feed, unfriending him on Instagram. It's insane. Like if it's, if that's your again, like I said, if that's your friend, friends, you owe them your loyalty. You have to, you just is what it is. I have some friends that are shitty people, but I just have to accept the way they are because they're my friends. Because if you're, if they're your friend, you're not going to try and change them. That's not what friendship is about. Friendship is accepting the person for the way they are with all their faults and their errors as you have. 
and just accepting them for their bad because the good far outweighs the bad. That's what actual friendship is. I know you're a dick. I know you don't. I don't. Know, I know you always ask me for money. I know you're always late. I know you're a crappy person to go out with, and you get aggressive. But the the goods are the, the good times are so good. I'm willing to put up with the bad. That's what friendship should be about. And again, unless they, you know, are serial rapists or serial killer or something of that ilk, you shouldn't be throwing your friends under the bus, especially publicly. Especially publicly, especially even the Brian Callan and Chris, uh, the Brian Callan and Brandon Shaw thing makes it worse because I remember at the beginning of the of this of the apology or the statement they made when they were crying, they said something like, "Oh, we haven't even spoken to him yet." They kind of let that slip. It's like you haven't even spoken to this guy and you're already making a public statement. So again, don't get me wrong. If you're a celebrity and you're golf, you know, you you're someone of some sort of notoriety you know and you agree with your friend behind the scenes hey i kind of have to step in front of this and tell people that i'm not really your friend but you know behind the scenes obviously i'm your friend and you agree it's still a scummy thing it's still a douchey thing to do but fair enough do what you have to do but to just come out there and just not even let the like mike said right not to even let the story develop it for 24 hours it's just insane and really makes you question how these guys will go on, especially some of these some of these other guys are always going on about how they operate outside of the industry and they're not involved in Hollywood and they kind of move to the beat of their own drum. But when real conflict or when real issues come about in the industry, they seem to all kind of like you know shy away and you know and kind of publicly disown everyone. It's really really interesting to see, man. It's really strange, but anyway. I guess in that case, we now know that most likely we'll see a comeback of Chris Alea very soon. It seems like um, if his friend's stepping out and making a statement, it means that more likely than not, we'll probably hear from Chris Alea soon. And hopefully, it's a lesson learned for everybody involved in it. Like, don't be quick to throw your friends on the bus. Don't treat all allegations like a verdict of guilt, or not, like a guilty verdict. Try and no, let, at least let somebody have their day in court. And yeah, that's all you can do, really, isn't it? And if it tra- transpires that that person was guilty of those heinous crimes, you know, throw him in jail, throw him in jail, lock him up and throw away the key. No problem with that. But give people a chance to prove their innocence at least, man. Mamma mia. But anyway, what can you do? This has been the Agassi News English Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you want to find out more regarding myself, of course, you, all the links to my socials are down below in the description box, whether you're listening via your podcast app or whether you're watching live now via YouTube. Um, and of course, you know, feel free to reach out, connect with me. Um, all I ask for you is to follow me on the whole Instagram and Twitter. And of course, make sure you share this show to your family and friends. But until next time, my dear compadres, I'll see you guys again very soon. Take care, be safe. If you're in the UK, try and wear a face mask before the 24th, right? Try and do that. And I'll see you guys very soon. Take care. Peace.